are very talented people and you all have more than one hustle and one passion in life. Mm. And so I love the fact that you're like rebuilding and renovating and restoring million dollar homes and you're also designing all this cool jewelry. I love the fact that you're like fixing and doing your mom's paper. <laughs> And you're such a great like person, you have such a great aura, and you're a professional as well. And I love the fact that your sense of style and fashion is amazing, and you're like styling all these people, and you do all these great reviews about like all these beauty tricks. So, this pit thing that I like thought about is all about that, it's about a collaborative, collaborative? I'm like, my English is horrible. You got it. Okay, platform where like people that are multifaceted and that have more than one passion in life can like express themselves. I love the fact that we're just eating and hanging out and like, you know, celebrating all of you and your achievements. And I love that. Like, you don't have to have it all figured out as long as you're trying, like without sounding very cliche, you know? And like you're all doing a great job in doing that. And like I want the world to know about all of you, seriously. So wow. that's why we're all here together. So cheers to that. Cheers to that. Know about us. Oh. I love Watch that. out world. Because <laughs> like as kids, we're always asked to pick something. What do you want to do when you're like older? And like you have to like go to school for fucking like 20 years and like study to be one thing in life, right? And like it's almost like if you have more than one passion in life, people look at you as either like not mature enough not focused, or you no frivolous or you know. And, and so like I feel like it's our job to tell people that it's okay to have multiple things that you like in life yeah. and it's okay to touch this and not finish it to touch this and maybe halfway do it and touch this and like fucking rock it and it's this, okay you know this right here is why i don't have a youtube channel <laughs> just yet because my passion is dabbling this is what i do i dabble yeah like i just it's like i do like i i wanted a wig so i taught myself how to make wigs and i make great wigs but I never, like people like, oh, make a wig business. I'm like, ah, no, not really. Like I do my makeup. I Sometimes I like to get dressed up and be fashionable and sometimes I don't. Like I'm not like 100% anything. I'm always everywhere. And it always surprises people because people expect me to be like a, like a typical creative that's just like out here and like going to events and whatever. But I'm like, no, I work a corporate job. Like I work an office job. I sit in my office all day and look at resumes. So I, I mean, I do a little bit of everything. I, I struggle sometimes because I love the stability of like working a corporate job and being in HR. And I'm a recruiter, by the way. So I'm a corporate recruiter. I love that. Like, I'm very task oriented, so I like being able to do that. But then again, there's this other side of me where it's like your personality doesn't fit that. And so it's like, you know, I like fashion, I like these things, but it's, I'm just everywhere. Like, I'm, I've always been a big DIYer. Like, anything I can do, figure out how to do myself, I'll do it. And that's kind of made me well rounded, but it's also made me somebody who cannot think so. Like I said, I was a pre K teacher, I've worked in retail, I am a recruiter now. I was in the army for four years and I did public affairs for the army. I was like a news reporter for the army. So, like, we could go on for days, like, but you, all the jobs I've had. You know, that's, that's like the beauty and diversity of, in like, all the things that you do, you know? So, one of the things, another thing about me is I own a, fran I bought a franchise uh, last year. I own a commercial cleaning franchise. And my biggest thing, like, uh, by no means am I passionate about commercial cleaning, but it pays well and I'm able to take care of myself with that. So I have the liberty to dabble in these things if I want to. And so that's my biggest thing was like, let me find something that keeps me stable, where I can run a business and, and have that going. But like, if I don't want to be a recruiter anymore, like I'm not stuck there. Like I can say, okay, whatever. Like I'm gonna go try this out for a while. Like I'm gonna go, I, I'm like, I'm really and I feel like at the end of the day, that's what makes it yeah. and powerful. You know, like it's cool to, you know, like do this and do that and do everything, but you gotta make sure that at the end of the day, like you earn your keep and you don't exactly. spend on it. Exactly. And that's what makes it more powerful. Exactly, so that's why I got my heart. Because right now I'm kind of on the fence. I'm thinking about becoming a firefighter. So, 
that's fucking amazing, man. <laughs> like, it's something I've like kind of been thinking about for the last few years, and now there's this new show called Station 19 that makes it look really cool. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> it's great. So I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I should do this. Like, and you should. And I, because I miss the military, and that's another thing. Like, where it's like I'm corporate, I'm also like creative, but like I was in the military, which is the opposite of everything else. But I miss that sometimes, like the physicality of the job, the running around, the like being in, I don't know, crazy situations. Yeah, and like stuff. in the field. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> but like, I, like, I relate a lot to what you're saying because, like, I've been for the past 10 years, like, doing consulting jobs for all these, like, big firms, whether, like, in fashion and, like, heavy industry and oil and gas, like, in retail and all kind of businesses. And, like, I always dress different. And I always carry myself in a different way, Depending and on you know, people. yeah, and like, <laughs> and people are like, "What are you doing here?" You know, and I'm like, "I'm fucking powerful, and I can do this, but I can also do other things in life." You know, like, what you like, do doesn't define you. Yeah, like I don't need, yeah, I don't need to choose, right? And, like, and you know, the crazy part, me being a recruiter, like I used to be, I used to be an agency recruiter, and now I'm a corporate recruiter. But when I was an agency recruiter, like I was trained, like. You see somebody who jumps from job to job to job to job, you're like, oh, I'm not, like, <laughs> no, they're, yeah. we're not going with them, they're gonna leave, yeah. like, they don't have a stable work history, and I'm like, I feel, I'm like, I'm a hypocrite, like, I'm, I'm the same, I do it, like, <laughs> and so I would always find myself, like, seeing people like that, and still, like, giving them a chance, because I'm like, I know how that feels, yeah. like, you're kind of just everywhere, and I don't mean to, like, brag or anything but I'm a quick learner and I pick up on things very quickly and that well-roundedness about me has made it hard to pick something I feel like sometimes it's easier to be somebody who's only good at one thing yeah. because then you just focus and become yeah, and you master at one it. Thing. exactly where like I've just kind of been like oh let me try this out try this out but there's also a beauty in that because you get to really experience all kinds of stuff so you know like about fashion right yeah. like a lot of people are like oh why don't you like create a line you dress so cool and I'm like I always had this like love-hate relationship with fashion where I'm like it's a fucking disgusting industry uh, where like everybody's like weighs 100 pounds and yeah. like eats an apple and like I don't know clothes are made in China and India and all that kind of stuff but I love beautiful things too you know I do too and, and like I never want to just confine myself in one thing I don't want to do that you know and like I really want to celebrate more people that do more than one thing in life that's true you know I think that's why I like fashion because it is multifaceted. It's frivolous, it's you know just fun and it's very deep, very meaningful. I have very powerful memories about because I grew up poor about the little clothes that I had, you know, it's such powerful memories. Um, and I like and that's one of the reasons why I like fashion. Because it is like what you said, it's it's a, it could be a terrible industry. I, but I like that. I like that it's this juxtaposition of like you know, surface level bullshit and very deep and very meaningful because that, that's life. Tell me, what's your story, girl? Ah, uh, I'm like all of, I'm everywhere, nowhere. You know, like how oh, you I say love everywhere. That. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. My new Instagram bio. That's <laughs> everywhere, nowhere at the same damn time. So I'm always very harsh on myself, and I think. All of us women, like men, are always like, oh, I look good, I'm so like skinny, I'm good, I'm this, I'm powerful, I'm this shit, you know? And like women, we're always super harsh on ourselves. I almost you know? Oh my god. <laughs> I know, and it's like, we're always like struggling, like, I don't, oh, I don't look skinny, oh, I'm not like smart enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. And like I always struggle, I'm like, oh my god, I'm like 29, what am I doing? I've, by the way, I moved to the US because I always wanted to sing. Like this is literally my story of why I moved here. Yeah. And like since probably age six, I've been singing all the time. And like I like growing up in I grew up in Morocco, right? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> Like, I grew up in Morocco, and Morocco is such a great country because, like, we had, like, we watched German TV and Lebanese TV and, like, Egyptian movies and, like, all kind of, like, different countries. We had such a great, like, like open-mindedness about, like, all kind of different cultures, right? 
And so growing up, I used to watch MTV Germany and MTV US. And like, I'll be dancing. Like, I remember getting my first cornrows when I was like 12 years old. And I was like Alicia Keys and like singing my fucking lungs out, like singing so loud and like Aaliyah and like it was, you know, it was like my dream, like, oh my God, the American dream. And I was just like always inspired by like the hip hop culture. And anyway, you know, like how you're, you grew up a certain way and like, I went to like a great business school in France, went to school in China. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. And so I've lived in Shanghai. Because I'm so harsh on myself, like, because I'm not like fucking Rihanna, like, I'm not there yet, you know? And so all these achievements and accomplishments that all people are like, oh my God, you're such a badass and you've done all of this and at 29, like, I can count on my hands, like probably the countries that I haven't seen, you know? And it's beautiful and it's great, but I'm always like, I'm failing in life because I haven't done yet what like my passion is, which is to be powerful and change the world and create like the next app that will like, revolutionize the world uh -huh. and like put an album out and go on tour and so you know how we're like you're always like you get this and I'm like I keep getting promoted and like started a business and like making money and like it's all good and it's cool but then I'm like no but that's not my passion and I feel like sometimes we're delusional a little bit because you're like my passion is this and actually it might not be this but you like set your mind on it and anything that is not that is not success to you you know yeah, exactly. and so what I'm trying to do as I'm like turning 30 in like three months I'm like trying to be more caring and kind to myself you know yes. we're like hey it's okay you've done great things and all these steps that you're taking in life are leading you to like your way of greatness that might not be Colleen's way of greatness or Chelsea's or Yeo or like Maria it's like your path and you're unique and like you might not be able to change the world like as you know this like grounder thingy of changing the world but you might be able to impact some people's lives and create things that can help other people you know yeah of course and like I really measure success with like how can you contribute to society? Like, what are you doing every day to make people's lives better, you know? I think that's what I struggle with sometimes because I feel like, even in my profession, like being a recruiter, that's one of the reasons I love it because people's jobs are such a huge part of their life. To be able to put the right person with the right company that makes them so happy, like, means something to me, but it just never feels like, I'm doing enough. Like even in the army, like I feel like I miss that like selflessness of giving back in some regard. And I think that's why I'm kind of like firefighter. Fi being want to be a firefighter because I'm like I don't want to be a cop. Like uh, it's too wild in these streets these days. So oh I can't get. And I feel that this is the issue of putting labels on things. Like a bad fi like a bad firefighter does less to society than a good fashion designer. Like that's how you think about it. Because like imagine, and this is like the dream it into like how sometimes you know things that seemed a little bit like um like how do you say like to feel how do you say this you know what i mean right useless yeah like useless and you know like superficial and whatever like they have more depth to it you know like at first so and i kind of struggled with that when i became an interior designer instead of being an architect because you know it's like oh all of a sudden i'm just a spec curator but it, there's more to you know like it's not a just like making things look pretty it's like you know how much time people spend in their homes that if it's not like their space or some safe space where they feel comfortable and like inspired and like and that really affects minds and it's the same thing and not like Kayleen we've talked about this because Kayleen also has a, a background in psychiatry so there's a lot more to just the visuals and it's the same thing you know it's like how you dress can truly affect people how people see you but but more importantly how you see yourself and like gain confidence in who you are because if you're not confident you won't be able to help anyone you know and, and I think I, I agree and that's where I think my struggle is is finding that balance between like 
depth and depth and like like how she said how fashion for instance you can still help people through that and finding where like finding where I want to go and like being able to help people with it like putting the two together to where I'm not 100% either it's not like I'm in this like selfish job where I'm like I could die in a fire because my mom was not here for it when I told her and I was like I'm gonna be a firefighter and she was like uh no you can just volunteer at a soup kitchen if you want to get back and I'm like oh no like I want to do it just back to your point yeah. of like oh it's not just about being a woman I think we struggle more as women because I go to a meeting with all these like 60 year old dudes, white dudes, and you say something and they don't listen to you and they interrupt you and you have to say it 10 times before you're being heard. And it's not it, once, it's not twice, you know? It's a look right in all fields and areas where you see women empowering women is that it's fucking awesome being a woman. I will say that. It's fucking awesome. Like, I love being a it woman. Is awesome. It is awesome. Being a woman. I would not. I have so much fun. <laughs> I wouldn't change my boots for balls for nothing. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> I don't care. I love being a woman. There is power okay. in femininity. My point that got completely missed is when I want to go back. My point that was completely missed is the pressure of being deep. But this is what I think, you know? I gotta say Go ahead, go ahead, Maria, go ahead. Close it out. I just I gotta finish like the mind thought here before it gets lost. The thing is, I totally get you, like, there are a lot of things that, you know, like, have to be overcome and that it's still a struggle to be a woman in a lot of environments, but, like, I read somewhere that the good thing about aging is that the older you are, the more ages you can have. Like, does it make sense? Yeah. I compare that to being a woman in the sense that, like, as a woman, like, sometimes you can feel like a man, sometimes you can be unisex. A man does not have that power. That's true. Um, I, if I, they don't love themselves. I, well, they, it's weird, you know, like, the struggle being a woman is, in the society, is trying to be a man. Well, to your point, when you're in corporate, not, and you're trying to keep up not to be a man. But just to be you, it's hard. But no, just, exactly, and that's, my, be that's what I have to say about this, because I agree 100%, I would not trade, like, I, I love being a woman, yeah. but I literally just had this conversation with my supervisor, like, two days ago, where I am a very, like, bottom line up front person, like, don't I don't I don't do the small talk unless like we're at that point or whatever if there's something we need to talk about in regards to work like I'm gonna address that and then we're moving on like that's it and I had this conversation with my supervisor and they were like he was like you know sometimes you you can kind of come across as like like rude or like oh, you I don't get that every you, day. you don't you mm -hmm. don't and I'm like but I'm but you know me I'm not and they're like well you know it just seems that way and whenever I sit there and think about the things I do I'm not rude by any means but if but a, it's man does a man that, does it oh, he's a it's leader just the way he he's is a leader. just the way he is but because it's a woman I'm like bitchy and I'm all these things bossy and I'm bossy and I'm, I'm demanding things mm -hmm. or I'm like negative temperamental mm -hmm. and things like that and I'm like no that's not the case emotional just, I'm telling you what it is like this is what it is and so I kind of struggle with that so yeah I love being a woman but there are things that I don't want to be a man by any means I'm all about Same here, the cooking the and the cleaning and having babies and all these no things like I, I'm probably just I'm, to clear I'm the air off. a woman I don't but be a I also want to have my career and do these things and not be judged differently than a man would because I got a vagina I, I, so um, I'm a designer I uh, it's it's hard for me to just use one label to describe myself in a way so I found that designer is the one that knows the most um, so the, like technically what I really do is interior design uh, but two years ago I launched um, Branco which is a lifestyle accessories brand um, hopefully it'll become a home goods brand Like traveling is what inspires me the most, and um, I will see. Like I, okay. yeah. Time out, like, real quick. Time out, real I quick. I need you please. to mark what just happened, like this time on the camera, and delete it because I just tried to put something in my mouth and it went went oh, down there. <laughs> Make sure I wasn't in it's there. It's being recorded. Everything you're saying. We're gonna crop that out. So I'm actually, I'm originally. 
was born in the United States, but then I went back to Portugal when I was um, one. So I was born in the United States because my parents are both doctors. My dad used to work at John Hopkins, that's how I ended up um, being born in Baltimore. And I guess that in a way, like my whole path to becoming more of an artist and a designer is due to that because I was brought up in a really science-oriented family. Like I was just like black sheep all the time. <laughs> There's always that one kid who doesn't want to do the same as their as siblings and yeah. Um, and that made me so that made me pursue my studies in architecture. That's what I went um, to college for. So I do have a bachelor in architecture. And all of this was happening in Portugal, so I've lived most of my life so far in Portugal. Um, but then about five years ago, well actually it was six or seven years ago, um, halfway through my master's, you know, like European crisis was hitting hard. Um, Y'all don't worry, me. it's all good. She's like her hands in her boob right now. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Not any of the joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Keep, no, it's fine. <laughs> Please spill more food there. Just keep going. Um, and yeah, so that's when the kind of like crisis hit and it kind of made me rethink my future because up until then I was convinced that I was going to become an architect um, but then I didn't finish my master's so I never became one or I haven't became one so far I can never know the future I might go back to school one day I might become an architect <laughs> um, and then I remember that at that Point, I was really lost in life to be honest uh, so because you know like I had just dedicated about six years into this degree which I had a bachelor but I wasn't like I just I felt really insecure in general and I feel that unfortunately that's what economical crises do to societies like you doubt yourself a lot um, I was lucky enough to have US citizenship so it made me um, consider moving to the United States and thank God I did. <laughs> but uh, at that point I was lost because I wasn't just like I honestly like really didn't have a path and wasn't sure of what I will be doing um, next. In my heart I still knew that you know I was more about art and design and all of that. Yeah every time. Every now wearing a hat. <laughs> me too. I could never wear a hat like that. I love wearing that. But it looks amazing. So actually well okay so now we have a topic going on. So here's the thing. I started wearing hats more because actually what paid my flight to the United States was that at a certain point in life. Um, I did a TV commercial where I had to shave my hair, like I went like full ball Wait. on national TV. <laughs> I forgot about this detail. Wait, I gotta show it to you because it's... Please, I wanna see. So that's when you started wearing hats? Well, more because it was winter time and it was like, super cold, you know, like just like not bullshit be with Chelsea focused on this. I don't, I have no clue. This is making me feel so uncomfortable. None. <laughs> you wanna None. Do I don't like, I don't do like... Make, I'm not like into makeup, like I don't do my hair, like I do my hair, but like I guess these are things I could make videos on, but like my biggest thing is I tell stories. Like, I think you're a great storyteller. And I'm not, but like, everybody the says The craziest this. shit always happens to you. And I tell the story and everybody's so amused by it all the time and I'm like, I'm just, I'm just telling y'all about life and I'm actually really not that amused by it, but I'm glad you guys get enjoyment from it because <laughs> it's usually me ranting about something or I don't know, telling about a guy stalking me or some random uh -oh. situation I'm in. Okay, okay so. Okay. 